Hey guys, this is Looney from the future today. Welcome to episode 18 of my hardcore adventure. The world is actually coming together pretty well and because the channel is growing much faster than I would have hoped, I want to share that with you. So today we are flying through a lot of progress to catch up to where I am. That means that we're gonna put together two videos that I intended to be separate which is one on technological progress because we're getting the base to the point where it is operational all the time, even if we're not there. And that starts with getting chunk loaders. Chunk loaders use nether portals. So we are here in the end dimension setting up a beacon to mine all the obsidian we need for the next little while. The second part of the video is actually one of my favorite things I've done so far. Because in this series, we ended up at an ocean monument pretty damn soon. And there was another one right next to it. Unfortunately, I didn't find any sponges there because that was what I was looking for. Because we need a lot of sponges to dry out the entire surrounding area of the ocean monument. After all our technology is in place, we are gonna go on a mad trip to find five ocean monuments today. But before we get to that, technology. So I'm making my way around the base right now to figure out where the chunk borders are and I actually mark them on the bedrock floor of the ocean monument because I need to figure out which chunks I want to load. And for now I'm gonna choose two chunks, one on either side of the monument right up against the outer wall. That means that if for example the iron farm where we're standing right now is slightly outside of the monument it's still going to be loaded. And since iron farms do not rely on hostile mob spawning mechanics, we don't need to have a player there. So I don't have to be in the area. The only requirement is the chunks have to be loaded. And that is what the chunk loaders will accomplish by sending minecarts back and forth to the nether. The guardian farm does rely on hostile mob spawning, so it will not work when we're not here. But it produces a ton of materials anyway, so we put an item sorter on it. Then I had to fish for a puffer fish because we need a ton of water breeding potions before we go on our monument run. First off, we're flying to the ocean monument next to us to get the gold because I didn't get it on the previous run. I was just looking for sponges. And then we're flying onwards because I found three more ocean monuments quite far away when I was looking for a coral reef. I do not know the seed. So I have to go out looking for things and the coral reef I did not find. But I found the ocean monuments and now because we need the sponges they are gonna come in very very handy. Now ocean monuments are still a tricky place so we have to be a little bit careful and that means before going in I'm gonna put on my chest plate because Elytra is not gonna do much in terms of protection in here. Since the last time that I raided an ocean monument, I actually did have a lot of practice with the guardians because I was draining my base. And I realized that I was more careful than I need to be. Of course I'm gonna be careful, but since the guardians have to charge their build attack fully before they hit you, so you can just weave in and out of pillars to prevent them from getting the hits in. And today, I'm gonna give that a try. Flying over these icebergs, we got a surprise. Because that was the sound of a guardian charging its attack. And there's another ocean monument right under here. So that means that we're going to be able to do four new ones. As I'm going down, I build another tube to guard my entrance into the monument. I'm blocking the guardian here so he doesn't get his hit in. And then even though we have mining fatigue, it is still pretty possible to mine down here. It just takes a few seconds. But with a potion of water breathing, Mining for 20 seconds here is not a problem at all because we are completely shielded. Now there are a lot of guardians in this room. I think there's like five, but as long as after every hit you make an effort to break line of sight, that is not going to be a problem. A 
a lot of this monument is frozen inside, so it's blocked. And I don't want to mine through because I have mining fatigue. So I decided to make my way out, make sure that it was safe. And when I'm not getting Guardian hits in, I decided to go back down and make another tube to get rid of the second Elder Guardian. Now as you can see this room has a different layout because there's not a lot of pillars, only the big one in the center. But you can do the same thing here, as long as I hit it and then circle around I will pretty much always break line of sight. Except when there's like maybe six guardians in here it would be problematic. But right now I'm fine, I'm just making sure that my food is full all the time so I get my healing. And then I swim around and get my hits in without taking any significant damage myself. And even if you try to enter the crowded treasury room, as long as you move with purpose and find shelter quickly, you are not gonna run into any real problems. Now with the first monument out of the way for today, I was feeling very comfortable, so it's time to step it up. Now as you can see this room is pretty full, there's a lot of guardians here, but as long as you keep moving at a good pace, weave in and out of the pillars, you are not gonna see any real danger here. And even though this is going really, really well, by now I've cleared four monuments and I only found one sponge room in the first one. So I was really, really glad to find one here. I made my way to the fifth monument of the day with phantoms hot on my tail. But when we made our way in, we found another sponge room. I have no idea if sponges are rare or we had pretty bad luck, but all in all, it was a pretty good score. I think we have enough sponges to get the draining done. So on my way back, I explored a little bit, found this shipwreck where we scored a buried treasure map, which is gonna come in real handy because I want to have a few conduits around the base. So we dug up the buried treasure, found some extra free diamonds there, which is not a bad score. I briefly considered to recheck this monument to make sure if I didn't miss a sponge room, but I decided against it and made my way back to base. But when I got there, I saw something funny because the daylight sensor for the armor farm is working well, but there is a golem standing on top of the circuits. And I made a glass layer there with redstone on top of it because I thought powered redstone would make it so that the golem couldn't spawn. Turned out this doesn't work, so I had to shoot this guy off and later replace the redstone with rails because rails will prevent the golem from spawning. At that point, the armor farm, although it only has two spawning nodes, is now operational all the time, so I will have all the iron I could possibly need for the rest of the game. 
In the end, this run gave us 57 new sponges, plus the 22 that we already had, 79 sponges should be good. So next episode, we will make a start with the draining of this place, and this was a massive project, it took me a while. For today, this is it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.